Hey y'all, how's it going? My name is Ethan Hallfield. I'm a guy with Southern Appalachian Anglers. In today's installment of our guide series gear reviews, I'm going to show y'all um, the basics of how to set up and fish a drop shot nymphing system. Um, this is a system that we use 90% of the time on our guide trips and it works very well whether you're a beginner or an advanced fly angler. Um, basically it's not much different than a double nymph rig. I'll go over like how to specifically set it up as far as like your leader build and what flies to use in another installment. Uh, today's video is more about how to fish it and the equipment to use. So right here I've got a 9 foot 5 weight rod. This is a TFO Pro Series 2. It's a stiff action rod. Um, it's got just a little bit of bend there at the tip and what this does it allows you to turn over these heavily weighted nymph systems very well. From there I've got a TFO NXT reel. Um, the beauty about nymphing is that you don't really need a fancy reel. This is just going to act as a fancy line holder for my purposes today. Um, the line on here is a Rio Perception five weight line. It's a double taper. The thickness of that belly on a double taper helps me to get these flies out when they need to be more efficiently. Now I've got two nymphs on here. These are nymphs that I've tied with tungsten beads on them. And the tungsten compared to something like lead or copper or nickel on a nymph, what it's going to do is going to double my sink rate on that nymph. And the key to nymphing, and this is what I see a lot of anglers struggle with, is that they're doing almost everything right except for they're not taking into account the weight that they need. And 90% of the time, if you're nymphing and not catching fish, it's not that there's no fish there, you're not getting down to them enough. Now, out here, what we've got going on is we've got just a little bit of high water, but it's still clear. I'm not really scared to nymph it, and even if it was a little bit muddy, I still wouldn't be scared to nymph it because these fish are going to be gorging themselves regardless. Um, I'm using the weight of these nymphs to my advantage, and not much different than a traditional nymph rig. I've got my indicator up here. This is an airlock indicator. These are very easy to adjust on your leader, and they don't kink up your leader, so you can get a lot of life out of your leaders as you use them. As far as fishing these is concerned, it's relatively easy. What I'm going to do, I'm going to position myself sort of perpendicular, or excuse me, parallel to where I think those fish are. So right here, I've got this nice long run. I'm expecting the fish to be somewhere out parallel to me. You can see it out yonder. And what I'm doing, I'm not trying to target the entire run in its entirety. I'm going to break up this run into specific sections and fish it thoroughly. Um, and the fish this system, it's really easy, actually. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just get just a little bit of line out. You don't need much because I'm only going to be casting out to about right here. And what I'm doing is I'm basically high sticking these nymphs in that seam that's sort of right there. I don't know if y'all can see that if Paul pans it out over yonder. But if you look in the water right here, we got a section sort of in the middle of that current where if you see those bubbles, they're moving a little bit faster. And then if you look over to my side of those bubbles, you see how the water's moving a little bit slower. That's our seam right there. I'm gonna start out targeting um, the seam and then slowly incrementing my way out into that run. All I do, I'm just going to get a little bit of line out. You notice I'm holding the rod right here too. Critical component to this is that I'm keeping my line pinched against the cork because what happens if I don't do that, that bow that gets developed in your line, that slack will impede your hook set. So you always want to keep your line pinched against the cork right here. That gives you a much better hook set on these fish. Now, if that fish is sitting right here, parallel to me, I do not want to cast on top of it because I got to give these nymphs time to sink down to where that fish is. The beauty about these tungsten nymphs is they're going to sink down very quickly in the water column. All I'm going to do, I'm going to throw my line, point my rod at my target, and just give it a nice hard stop. And what that does is it turns these flies over and then makes that indicator land right where my rod tip is pointed. And as it goes through there, I'm going to keep my rod tip up and high, keeping most of my leader off of the water and following that indicator down just right here in front of me. Again, I'm not trying to fish the entire run. I'm trying to fish this spot in front of me thoroughly. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm just gonna point my rod. And this works in terms of you being a right-handed caster. I'm gonna point my rod kind of up here towards the sky. And again, I'm going to outstretch my arm and give it a nice hard stop like this. I'm gonna point my rod tip at my target. Once my indicator hits the water, I'm gonna pick my rod tip up. And what this does is it alleviates the factor of having multiple currents in a run. Um, when you look at a run, it can be sort of deceiving because it looks like all this one singular current. And that's not necessarily the case. Um, if you look, and Paul, if you don't mind, just pan the camera up that way. Um, if you'll notice, we got this sycamore tree right here. There's a branch hanging down. And it's, it's creating sort of a current break right there. What that is doing is that is slowing the momentum of the water down 
and that momentum is slowed all the way out through this run. It creates sort of a little slick right here. This water right here is moving slower than the water on the other side of that seam. So if I leave on my water, or excuse me, if I leave on my line sitting right here, those nymphs are then going to be moving slower than what the water is actually doing over there. And that can be good in some instances, but it's going to be more productive if I can pick my rod tip up and keep that those flies and that indicator moving at the same current speed as the current's actually moving. It gives you a much more natural presentation. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the indicator down. If you notice what happens right here, there's a wake that comes off my indicator. That's all I know I need to pick up and make another cast again. That wake is telling me that what happens is um, underwater, those nymphs are moving naturally and all of a sudden they start getting kicked up by the current and start moving up. Now you can get a couple of eats occasionally. It does look like a, a, an insect coming off the bottom and emerging, but after that point, that's when you need to know you need to lift the rod tip up and make it. The other thing I'm not doing is I'm not setting the rod this way or upstream. With this technique, it's the last thing you want to do is set the rod upstream of the fish. Just like that, you see how I kind of set it down to the side in a quick motion? That's all you have to do. Now, you notice what I'm doing right here? It's a sort of small rainbow and it's pretty easy to fight. But I'm not holding my rod tip straight up like this in the air. Because when I do that, I give the fish all the control in the world over me. When I drop my rod tip down to the side, that then gives me control of the fish. If you little tip, you got a big fish on, you want to kind of play them a little bit more just to get them in the net easier. Take a rod and kind of zigzag it back and forth. That confuses that fish, disorients them. That one has the top line. Then you can net them. If you do have to hold the fish, gentle with them, don't squeeze them. So it comes right out. No one's sitting there for a second. The reason why I advocate for um, letting the fish sit in the water for as long as possible, trout are like us, they build up lactic acid in their bodies uh, whenever they're under stress. That's a burning sensation you'll get when you're working out or um, if you're doing any sort of strenuous activity. And what that is, is your body's response to a lack of oxygen. When I hold that fish out of the water and play him for too long, what ends up happening is, is that he's building up lactic acid in his body where his body is able to produce oxygen for himself. And if I hold him up out of the water, he's not able to breathe. So his lactic acid buildup will continuously rise and rise and rise to the point where it becomes toxic you might release that fish and let it swim off and it'll float belly up and die a few minutes later because it cannot process that lactic acid buildup. So, to release them, I'm just going to gently cradle them like this. You notice when I hold them like that, they don't really flop around too much. They will some, but this is a stock of rainbow and they like to alligator roll pretty frequently. Easy, bud. There we go. Nice rainbow trout. Gently release them, swim off and be good.